Hi guys, dan selamat kembali ke Studio Sembang Hari ini in the studio As you can see, we have somebody very very special We have the beautiful Miss Sharifah Rose Hi guys Sis, I sangat happy you ada kat sini I know, finally I know kan? Okay, I ada cerita untuk bagi tahu korang Actually, from like the first episode um, Rose was like one of the first person yang I contact Untuk jadi guest dalam Studio Sembang Tapi disebabkan scheduling Which is like honestly babe so, I faham Clashing, selalu Selalu clashing Kita macam tak ada rezeki yeah, lagi And I cancer, book cancer, book cancer I Tahu I thought tak jadi babe Oh my god Tak 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 Kita kena jadikan dia So I'm very happy That finally Sorry. today Dalam apa-apa dugaan Yang kita dah Nasib dapat. baik Jadi kan. juga finally Tapi tak apa You're here And that's the most important thing And I'm so happy So anyways um, Let's get started I guess yes. Basically uh, The first question is like Where are you from? What was your childhood mm-hmm. like? Where were you born? Um Literally, macam, <laughs> macam pergi interview. Okay. okay, I'm from Shah Alam. I'm 24 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, my childhood like, just basically sama je kot dengan orang-orang biasa. <laughs> pergi sekolah, and then masuk uni, and then tiba-tiba terjebak masuk um, jadi influencer. Lepas tu tiba-tiba jadi actress pula last year. Uh-uh. Everything jadi tiba-tiba. Uh-uh. Hidup I memang random, babe. I memang random. <laughs> Tak apa, okay. so kita kena explorekan random ni lah Sebab I rasa macam Sebenarnya walaupun dia macam random And dia macam something yang maybe you tak pernah expect Dalam your childhood Semua benda jadi for reason tau Betul, kan? I agree Yeah, so actually when I was googling you And I dapat tahu yang you started um, A degree in uh, marketing business Right? Mm-hmm. So how is that like? You pernah terfikir ke yang you akan jadi entertainment ke? Memang you fokus pada business saja. No, actually Masa I habis SPM I tak tahu nak study apa So masa I ambil SPM, uh, I ambil lukisan kejuruteraan And then What? I Yeah huh? I ambil science technical oh, oh. Lepas tu when I first applied I sebenarnya study degree in architecture oh. <laughs> Mesti <laughs> macam huh? Jeez, I terkejut <laughs> uh, okay. okay, I study degree in architecture sampai SEM 2 And I macam Okay, this is more like architecture And I can't <laughs> do this This is not for me So sampai SEM 2, I macam I tell my mom, I cannot do this So I um, stop. I masuk foundation in law Tiba-tiba I, I macam law pula. Because I tak tahu I tak tahu nak study apa I hmm. macam A very lost child Yang Aku nak study apa Aku nak jadi apa sebenarnya I tak ada identity Faham. So I macam Try to explore Anything yang ada Maksud tu available Was just law and tassel So I macam Okay lah just Study law lah I ambil law Dah habis foundation law Then I ambil Business and marketing Because I think macam Okay lah let's just Be a business woman lah Jadi lawyer macam susah je <laughs> So I was like, okay, let's try business pula. Arki torture. Lepas <laughs> tu law. Law. Lepas tu business. Uh-uh. Alhamdulillah lah, sebab j- jadilah juga business. <laughs> Sekarang <laughs> Betul. Menjadilah juga. Uh-uh. Tapi I rasa pengalaman yang sangat luas tu, dia macam walaupun you tak jadi seorang lawyer ataupun you know, architect, at least you ada lah ilmu tu. So, betul. susah untuk orang tipu you juga. Betul, betul. Yeah. So, that's very at important. At least, dekat architecture, I macam sempat lah study Sam 1. I learn about design. So I use that in my business now and then bila I study foundation and law I use that bila I nak sign contract ke apa at least I have basic knowledge about betul, law. Betul, betul. So I think like you said hidup ni tak adalah random mana pun. Mm-mm. Everything yang jadi ada reason. Betul. Yeah. Semua benda dah tertulis pun. Betul. So after you studied your uh, marketing business degree you tak habiskan yang degree tu? Belum. So tapi it's okay I mean it's okay. I mean I had this conversation with the previous guest yang ada is that like education sangat penting it untuk is. dapatkan ilmu tu. Tapi, I mean, for me, sebagai seorang yang tak ada degree juga, <laughs> I still think kalau you cukup kreatif dan you cukup bertabah, you akan boleh menghasilkan like a good career anyways. So, dari you punya business degree, what made you stop? Was it sebab you dah terjebak masuk ke dalam industri? Yes. Um, I was studying business degree um, sampai sempat. Lepas tu, tiba-tiba, I dapat job offer untuk berlakon. Hmm. Tiba-tiba, like random morning, I, I dapat call macam... Pergi casting and I macam pergi and I thought I could do both. I thought I boleh berlakon and study at the same time because I see a lot of people boleh uh-uh. buat dua-dua. So apparently, I'm not that type of person. <laughs> I tak boleh multitask. I cannot focus on two things. I can macam focus on one thing je. Yeah. So I told my mom macam I want to explore my career dulu. When I have time, baru I macam study. Mm-mm. And then mama cakap, it's okay. Like opportunity tak datang selalu kan? Ya, yeah, betul. So just do your um, whatever you want to do and it's never too late untuk study. Untuk kembali, exactly. Betul. My dad pun dah 40, 
My dad is 44 They say dia nak ambil master So macam You knew your dad yeah. oh. My dad kan <laughs> <laughs> So my dad kata tak takpelah It's okay My dad pun 44 And then baru nak ambil master So it's never too late for me uh-huh. to study Exactly Yeah. Tapi that means actually Pada masa yang you tengah belajar tu You memang dah start social media Semua tu mm-hmm. Sebab I masih ingat Sebelum you masuk ke dalam uh, dunia lakonan You were already like Super successful On social media tak, seriously. Tak adalah successful sangat pun. <laughs> Tapi, you mean you're active and mm-hmm. you're producing content. Which means that you pernah lah bekerja and um, belajar Study, pada masa yeah. yang sama. It was hard. Yeah, I can imagine. Macam mana you ciptakan masa untuk macam buat content tu? Is it something that you selalu passionate? Um, No. Because I I tak ada social media before I habis sekolah. During my school time, I tak ada social media langsung. So, bila I dah habis SPM, I macam, yes, this is my time to like buat social media. Because yeah. my tak bagi, I ada social media at all. So, it's just me posting pictures and then people like the picture. And then, I don't know, tiba-tiba dapat job jadi model pula. Uh-huh. And I just enjoy macam having my own income. Uh-huh. So, whatever yang I boleh dapat my own income, I just try and do. And then, apparently, I do like Doing what I do Masa mm-hmm. tu Create contents And it's It's nice to This influencer life Buka jalan for me to Like meet a lot of people mm-hmm. So I just You know Go with the flow So time tu is the time Yang you tengah belajar lagi lah Yeah So you were doing all of this At the same time which is At like the same time Susah juga lah Because impressive. macam um, At first I buat For passion Yeah I suka Yeah And then You had to do it Because You You need to do it Sebab mm-hmm. kerja kan uh-huh. Then macam Ada requirements Ada deadline And then you ada deadline assignment So It's It kind of took a toll On my mental health juga mm-hmm. Some Masa I study law Foundation law Susah juga lah And then I kena pergi Fly Buat travel log Semua So Dekat university Macam I selalu <laughs> Kena marah dengan lecturer And I don't make Friends sangat dekat uni I don't Sebab you tak ada masa Ya yeah, tak ada masa uh-huh. I tak dapat masa Untuk live that uni life sangat mm. So macam tak dapat Nak create friends sangat yeah. And people pun Macam intimidated by you Tak nak cakap dengan you sangat So I'm macam Quite lonely uh-huh. So yeah. yeah Actually So orang selalu cakap kan Kalau kita jadi seorang influencer Must be like such a fantastic life Wah semua mewah-mewah yeah. mewah. What would you say About something like that Like apa reality sebenarnya Mewah-mewah ni, I think most of the things yang kita dapat pun free stuff kan. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't come from a family yang senang. Everything yang I dapat sekarang from my hard work. So, influencer life, um, I rasa tak adalah hidup mewah pun. We, most of the time macam kena, macam mana? Put a facade, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Faham? Macam create an alter ego. I think social media punya personality dengan real life personality I completely different. Serious? Sangat sangat different. I'm actually introvert. Like I'm very shy. I don't really talk to people. I have a very buat kerja sendiri yeah, macam tu. Yeah, kerja seorang-seorang. I yeah. I enjoy my own space. Tapi macam bila buat kerja ni I kena go out and be extrovert, jumpa orang semua. Tak faham sangat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But social media is Everything is a lie, though. Tak, tak. I think that's the same way. And I think it's so funny because uh, I think the job actually is like untuk ciptakan this like, as you said, like facade ataupun image of mm-hmm. the perfect life. Yeah. Tapi realitinya kita semua manusia, kita semua menangis, ada Betul stress sendiri, whatever. And you just have to fake it. And lagi Betul. better you fake it, lagi cantik lah you punya social Betul. media. Betul. Tak? And then people like, you know. Yeah, yeah. And then most of the time, macam, oh, influencer kan fake. Tapi sebenarnya korang suka kan benda-benda fake ni. <laughs> Filter. Kalau orang tunjuk macam too much skin, too much yeah. r- rawness pun, orang tak suka pun. Ataupun eh, banyak sangat lah. Awal lah. Ah. Eh, tak cantik lah. Yeah. Eh, kenapa you tak edit ni? Eh, kenapa, kenapa tak kurus? Yeah. Banyak pula komplain kan? Korang sebenarnya suka kan? That fantasy <laughs> life, fake life. Korang suka sebab it gives you bits of macam, oh, I want this kind of life. Yeah, it's escapism sebenarnya. Betul. Sebab kita semua macam, we... Akan menghadap our own dugaan And then when we go on social media Sometimes it's nice lah to see like Wow, bestnya Wow, I ada something to ah, To want to be in life Macam tu Kan Tapi the reality is quite Different lah Very sad How did your parents feel about you Jadi seorang yang sangat successful Dekat social media Like kita belum masuk The, the acting phase of your life lagi eh? How did your parents feel about it Considering uh, Diorang yang tak bagi you Ada social media in the first place mm-hmm. Tiba-tiba you jadi macam Sangat successful dekat social media What did they think? Hmm My dad 
mula-mula my mom lah mula-mula dia kata macam kenapa nak ada social media like it's not good for you. Lepas tu I cakap lah oh tapi I enjoy it. Lepas tu masa I dapat job modelling my dad macam ada ke orang nak bayar you just to post picture. Mm-hmm. It doesn't sound legit to me. Ya yeah, faham. Masa tu baru-baru lagi I dapat macam job oh, buat review buat campaign and then my dad macam I don't think this is legit. I rasa ni scam. Yeah. So, I cakap my dad, why don't you just trust me, bagi I tiga bulan, I will show you. Sis yakin eh, tiga bulan saja. <laughs> tiga bulan. I will show you, I can earn my own income. And then, after that, you jangan kacau I. <laughs> kalau, kalau betul benda ni scam, then okay. Uh-uh. I take your advice, and I can terminate my Instagram. Pasu, and then after, not, A month lah. And then I proved to him that I can earn my own income. Okay. And then I cakap dengan dia, jangan risau, I pandai jaga diri, everything pun I akan update diorang. And I actually get my parents to get involved. So my mom is my manager. So oh. everything, my schedule semua dia tahu. My dad akan macam handle contracts ke apa. So everything, diorang tak payah risau. Diorang tahu. Faham. Yeah. Faham. I think one of the ways for me to what my parents trust me is to get them involved mm-hmm. juga. So, okay lah. Mm-hmm. Daripada orang tak suka, sekarang they're like my biggest supporter. Kan, exactly. So Tapi, tu tu satu, it's really important untuk your parents ada sokongan ni sebab I rasa satu lagi yang orang tak tahu is that like bila you kerja dalam entertainment industry, dia sebenarnya industri yang penuh dengan kesunian. Betul. You know, walaupun you kerja yeah. dengan ramai, you jumpa dengan ramai, whatever, last last you balik rumah, you keseorangan lah sebab you tak ada masa nak cultivate Betul, personal eh. life. So even time tu, like sebelum you even masuk, I I I I cannot imagine you tengah struggle dengan your you punya you know your studies ta, sa, pada masa yang sama you tengah juggling juga your social media career mm-hmm. untuk proofkan kepada your parents juga yang you ada harapan dalam industri ni <laughs> yang yang you akan selamat yang you boleh wujudkan satu career dekat sini. Mm-hmm. So your personal life macam mana time tu? You ada masa ke ataupun you memang rasa macam lama? You know like ta, I I rasa masa tu. Because macam everything kita dah start share dekat social media kan. And then um, macam I cakap tadi lah, everything on social media. Kita post everything yang nampak cantik je kan. Tapi reality kita tak tunjuk ke orang. Mm-hmm. So it does get lonely. And then sometimes I rasa macam this is not me. Mm-hmm. Like I always have to satisfy people tau tak. Mm-hmm. And then I rasa I don't get to be myself. But that that what people like. Mm-hmm. So... Um, most of the time, I kalau I rasa macam feel low ke apa, I can take my time off from social media. Right now, I I can macam limit myself from social media. I tak share so much. Because mm-hmm. dulu, I rasa I share a lot tau. I pergi mana, I buat apa, my problems semua. I tweet, I post, Insta story, everything. So, I learned from my my past. It, You shouldn't share anything on social media. You yeah. don't have to share everything on social media. Betul? People will like use it against you. Yeah. Um. I think hopefully kita akan nampak macam benda ni berubah lah. Tapi a lot of the times when it's social media sekarang, dia bukan macam entertainment dulu di mana kita tak 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 boleh dapat connection direct dengan audience kita. Betul. So kalau audience kita terlalu kenal kita pun, dia akan Susah. jadi masalah dari segi macam bukan semua orang baik. Betul. You know, akan ada komen yang macam kecaman semua tu. Betul. You pernah kena ke time yang you buat social media saja? Like, how did you handle the negative comments? Um, At first, of course macam... Because social media... Orang free kan nak cakap apa-apa kan? Ya. Yeah. Diorang cakap, diorang tweet, they can just hide behind a account yang fake. Diorang takkan kena apa-apa. Paling kuat pun diorang delete je lah kalau orang kena kecam balik. Mm-hmm. Bukan yang kena saman ke apa kan? Tapi bukan It's semua pakai different. muka sama ataupun nama betul on on, yeah. on social media anyways. So macam, whatever criticism yang diorang throw on social media, orang tak fikir tau. These people on social media are actually real people. You baca you tak setiap human. satu komen? I baca every comments yang orang throw at me, I baca. Dulu, I kind of take it the hard way. I tak tahu macam nak take criticism. Mm-hmm. Tapi, lama-lama I rasa macam, I cannot tutup mulut orang kan. Betul. People will just say whatever they want. Mm-hmm. And they can be really mean mm-hmm. and be really hard on you, man. Yeah. Dia rasa dia orang entitled so much to say everything about you. So, one day I just learn how to take criticism. Like, there are... Um, 
constructive criticism yang you boleh ambil mm-hmm. untuk perbaiki your mistakes ke improve your life. Tapi some criticism, they just want to take you down. They just hate you. Yeah. They just want to see they you just... cry. They just want to see you go down. Yeah. Ada orang yang macam tu, babe. Dia tak puas hati yeah. tengok orang lain happy. Betul. They just tak happy dengan hidup diri sendiri orang. sebenarnya. Diri sendiri. Uh, I think that that's the thing about Twitter lah. And nowadays, people just tak ada uh, suka sangat cakap. Mm-hmm. Diorang free to talk whatever they want kan. Sebab diorang tak takkan benda tu tak akan effect kat diorang. Mm-hmm. Yang kena effectnya kita. Kita baca kita yang macam down. Kita yang sedih. So, I rasa everyone out there should whatever diorang rasa nak comment apa-apa, they should think first. Betul. Benda ni patut ke? Benda ni akan bantu ke orang ni kalau dia leave a comment macam ni? Kena wait pros and cons diorang nak critic anyone. Betul. Kadang-kadang it's just opinions kan. Tapi yeah. sometimes your opinions don't matter. Ya, yeah, betul. And you don't know so much about that person to give opinion point. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think kalau you don't have anything nice to say, just Diam keep jelah. it to yourself. Betul. So, you tak tahu what Orang to go through their lives, struggles they go through. You rasa macam entitled so much to give your opinions and critics. Sometimes it's best to just, you know, sit back. Yeah, sebab benda tu tak membantu orang yang you tengah komen tu. And sebenarnya, Betul. soalan yang lagi like pelik is, benda ni bila you letak komen negatif tu, dia membantu diri you ke? Tak juga. Kan? Ya, yeah, sekarang you sebarkan negativity dalam your life juga. Betul, tapi dia orang suka. Hmm, tak tahu pula sih. <laughs> they just find it very entertaining to see people macam kena yeah. kecam. Yeah. And on Twitter, everything yang go viral nowadays, it just... Benda-benda yang tak seberapa positif Benda-benda pun. yang negatif. Ya, yeah, betul. Everything. Benda-benda positif, kita tak nampak pun nowadays, kan? Betul. Macam orang ni menang award ni ke, orang ni oh. best in this ke. Kita tak nampak dah this kind of things. It doesn't encourage us to do better in life pun. Betul. Kita just see everything yang go viral. Dia ni kena kecam sebab ni. Dia ni kena kecam sebab ni. Ya, betul. Sampai sekarang ni orang kena create marketing strategi untuk buat orang yeah, kecam kontroversi kontroversi yeah. benda tu je yang jual sekarang yeah. ni isn't it sad it is very sad it's so sad social media is so <laughs> depressing <laughs> that tapi i guess like kalau kita nak tengok the positive eh, saya rasa you seorang yang um, maybe you sudah kata memberi orang banyak sangat inspiration i don't know <laughs> maybe you tak rasa benda tu because that's the thing about social media juga yang maybe lebih kurang you akan rasa benda ni bila you masuk dalam acting juga bila kita bekerja kita bekerja dalam depan kamera kita mm-hmm. tak nampak audience kita at all tapi you tak you tak akan nampak berapa ribu ratus ribu juta orang yang nampak you tapi they're there mm-hmm. um, so kita tak tahu berapa banyak kita punya impact but i'm sure even at that time sebelum masuk dalam acting there was so much impact do you remember the time like kali pertama ada orang macam approach you in public was like Oh my god, I think what you got social media I love oh. you so much Do you still remember? Yeah, I remember And it's so nice to See these people Macam datang kat you And yeah. support you Because all this The hates yang you dapat Dekat social media You actually believe that oh, Everyone hates me yeah. Mana-mana I pergi I kind of rasa macam Social anxi- anxiety Anxiety Macam Shit, everyone just looking at me And then they hate me so much So I At one point I macam avoid Seriously? Jumpa orang Especially in uni tu Yeah I selalu kena kecam kan Yeah So uh-huh. bila in uni I macam takut gila Nak make friends Because I takut macam Betul ke orang ni sincere Nak be friends with me Ke dia just nak I buat video dia <laughs> Tiba-tiba dia boleh jadi memang Kan Ke um. dia just nak korek rasa So they Or can use it against juga. me Yeah Ooh, Dangerous So I macam At one point I macam ada social anxiety Kau tak I'm very happy go lucky person Yeah Sebabkan social media I terus jadi introvert Ayo. Yeah Faham. Teruk tu Sampai sekarang ke You rasa macam tu Sampai sekarang Even kalau macam I pergi events I macam oh, I don't want to go I don't want yeah. to meet people I takut Faham. And I takut like If I meet this person This person akan macam Judge me ke mm-hmm. Or they know things That people say about me And even if I google myself Semua benda-benda buruk kot Serius ke? Tak ada benda yang nice things Actually Like I always go viral For the wrong reason tak ada pun takkan and tak pernah ada orang yang pergi viral for the right reasons babe. Ya we. Yeah. Isn't it sad? It is sad. 100% it's sad. Just sedih kan? Tapi this is the industry and like kalau I boleh memberi apa-apa nasihat pasal isu ni is like I 
sebenarnya kita sangat sama I pun social anxiety I benci pergi event Sebab I, su- I susah nak macam Bila I nampak ramai orang I senang macam Okay I akan retreat balik ke dalam my introvert universe Di mana macam Okay Oh my god So many people <laughs> Tapi pada masa yang sama Timing macam tu sebenarnya Yang you kena jadi lagi kuat Dari your situation And you kind of have to force yourself a little bit Sebab satu benda yang I belajar Sepanjang career saya Ataupun Sepanjang my life juga Is you tak boleh nak control at all apa yang orang rasa pasal you mm-hmm. Kalau orang tu Dah buat keputusan Yang dia tak suka dekat you Tak ada apa-apa Yang you boleh buat Dalam dunia ni Untuk convincekan dia Yang you seorang yang baik Betul Ya yeah, you dah kalah Sebab dia dah Dia dah letak larangan tu Sendiri you know Their own wall And so Daripada you cuba Nak convincekan dia You seorang yang baik Baik you just Buat tak tahu je Sebab at the end of the day Untuk setiap satu orang Yang rasa macam tu pasal you Akan ada juga Yang rasa macam Oh my god I love her She's the most beautiful Cool, smart, funny Semua And just maybe belum ada peluang lagi untuk jumpa orang macam tu. Betul. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. jangan jangan bagi seorang yang sangat sangat tak relevan dalam kehidupan you untuk tutup hati you kepada orang yang maybe really really sayang you. I think I need to learn to look um, that side juga. Because uh-huh. I try to focus on. So but you know like this kind of people yang sayang you, suka you, support you, they don't go and like tweet about it. So yeah, kadang kadang macam, yeah. hey, I love you. Yeah. Dia tak ada. Kalau jumpa Rela, then they would say. Yeah. Tapi kalau social media, everything is like hate. Yeah. Uh-huh. So one day you kind of just believe that people hate you. you yeah. Know? It's sad. Yeah, it is really sad. Tapi I know it's hard. Dia sangat senang untuk orang cakap kepada orang yang tengah mengalami the situation. Okay. So easy for me to say like, no lah girl, people love you. Like, but pada masa yang sama, you can know some, um, you can really like, I know it's very hard but you have to try to be strong with it. Betul. Sebab tak mungkin you akan pergi sejauh ni kalau orang tak sayang you babe. Betul. Kan? Like you tengok you punya success, sebenarnya dalam entertainment industry ni, dia, dia terpulang pada, selalu orang akan tengok dua benda kan. People always say it's either like bakat or like you punya fans and influence you macam mana. Tapi sebenarnya ada satu lagi rahsia lah industri kita Which is Orang suka kerja dengan you ke tak? Betul Sebab kalau sebenarnya. orang tak boleh ngam dengan you on set Last-last Kalau nama you ada dalam line up tu Dia tak akan saja semua dia macam Oh bencilah kerja, kerja dengan dia Dia sangat susah lah Aku tak nak pun kerja dengan dia Ya yeah, betul Ya yeah, so Di antara satu reason Kenapa orang still nak kerja dengan you Kenapa you still ada kerja yang sangat powerful Sampai sekarang Adalah orang suka you kot babe Ya yeah. So that's that's important I just thing. hope that I dapat peluang untuk macam meet these people uh-huh. And sit down these people Tunjuk the real side of me Not just the facade yang I orang create nampak. on social media Yeah because I think also satu lagi Orang nampak you such a beautiful person And orang nampak the facade on social media mm-hmm. So maybe orang tak pernah dapat kenal you Macam it, mana I don't know how to channel it I I don't know how to Macam talk to these people Kalau I jumpa orang tu macam Okay then I can be nice to you Tapi yeah. kalau on social media Macam mana I nak Connect with these people Kita macam seem to detach Dengan semua orang Ya yeah, tapi tu memang Part of the job jugalah You just kena kan. berterus Dengan apa yang membuatkan You happy just is And abaikan je lah Pendapat orang lain Benda tu takkan pernah Positive for you anyways Betul But from social media You ada dapat banyak peluang And contohnya It's like yang you sekarang Dah masuk acting mm-hmm. Right Which You said they, you ada dapat audition Is that the acting job Yang last time you dah dibuat? Yes okay. Betul And that, that morning Tiba-tiba I tengah tidur And then tiba-tiba I dapat call uh, this From production house Dia kata Boleh tak you datang casting Or uh, You buat video Casting You baca script ni I nak tengok Okay Saya so, macam Okay ni untuk apa? Oh untuk drama Saya macam Oh tapi I tak pernah berlakon Tak apa you buat je Saya so, pun macam Set up pakai iPad I <laughs> And I baca script Okay Buat macam ni And then kena berlakon sorang-sorang Sebab tak ada orang nak cue dialogue kan Ya yeah, ya yeah, ya yeah. So I buat je lah Because I was asked to do it So I macam buat je lah And yeah. then I submit the video Lepas tu dia kata Okay can you come to the office Macam Okay So I datang And then dia kata Okay kita nak bagi you um, Job cerita ni Tapi heroin Tapi you tak pernah berlakon kan So kita nak tengok experience you dulu So you try bawa watak sampingan dulu So I buat My first drama Watak sampingan uh, Dengan Rina Diana Dengan Kak Baha. Oh, So nice. that was my first Experience berlakon So I macam Okay um, I tak tahu apa-apa I datang set I tak tahu How the camera works <laughs> I tak tahu macam mana nak um, Lontarkan dialog I just tahu Hafal dialog And just deliver it yeah, Tu je Ya yeah, I tahu And I tak tahu macam Nak gerakkan badan I tak tahu the action semua So I memang Zero knowledge About acting And then uh-huh. job tu Tiba datang Okay you dapat job ni uh, Next week you masuk Okay Bawa baju ni And then Just just do buat it. je yeah, Just faham, do it faham, faham. So I macam Okay 
I buat je lah and then uh, diorang kata okay datang office saya sekali. Kita nak uh, you jumpa dengan hero untuk next drama. So I datang office. Maksudnya, wait by the way, maksudnya you did a really good job lah kalau sekarang diorang tengah offerkan you as heroine. Means you did a good job lah sis. Dia ni orang yang paling modest kot like paling humble, paling... I don't know. Yeah, I think I did. I think I did great job. So yeah. orang macam offer heroine. Of course job lah. Ibu. Of course, of course, of course. So I jumpa the hero and then we had a talk dengan producer semua. Dia yeah. kata okay, cuba korang um, rehearse this dialogue. Mm-hmm. So I macam okay. Dia kata okay, next week uh, boleh datang untuk script reading. Kita dah start drama ni the next following week. Ayuh, cepat. cepat. Sis tak ada cepat masa gila. nak macam baca skrip semua. Ada masa ke sebelum you masuk set? Tak ada, babe. And Ayuh. then masa dapat skrip tu, skrip tu tak siap lagi. A few skrip je yang I dapat. Mm-mm. So, yang I tak I baca je lah the storyline kan. You cuba nak dapat apa you boleh dapat lah dari beberapa episod yang you ada. Yeah. Huh? And then I macam try make an effort uh, dengan the hero tu pergi um, berguru dengan Kak Eli Suryati. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, dapat lah kejap. It's just Daripada petang tu sampai pukul 1 pagi, kita orang just rehearse this one scene. Daripada petang sampai malam, babe. satu scene je kita orang rehearse. Mm-hmm. So, my first job tu yang I macam belajar how the camera works, macam nak deliver dialog, macam mana nak uh, feel the emotion. From zero knowledge, babe. And then I kena kejam sebab tak pandai berlakon. Memanglah I tak ada tiba berlakon, so I tak pandai berlakon. So that was my first time I had I had to go through it the hard way. Yeah, faham. <laughs> so talk us through what happened. So lepas time you tengah shooting benda ni on set, you ada rasa tak macam um, nervous or anything? Sangat. Yeah. Nervous gila. Like on my first day tu, I tak tahu pun macam mana nak baca scene. So dia akan bagi call sheet satu slash dua puluh dua. Yeah. Sepuluh slash dua puluh tiga. I tak tahu apa benda tu. Faham. So I and I baru tahu masa tu. Kita shoot Kita bukan yang ikut episod Ya yeah. Tiba-tiba episod 5 Tiba-tiba episod 10 Sedikit uh, messy <laughs> Sangat messy sebenarnya Ya yeah. Tiba-tiba episod ni And then scene ni menangis Scene ni bercinta Scene ni happy-happy Ya yeah, so you kena menangis You kena love air mata you Lepas tu you kena Oh I love you Kan <laughs> tiba-tiba And so, then you kena menangis balik Ha uh, It's susah So I macam Oh okay So selama ni I ingatkan shooting You ke episode So <laughs> sekarang ni I tak tahu Yang sebenarnya shooting ni Macam ni Dia Di ikut uh, Location jam. Location Crazy yeah, yeah, yeah. I macam Culture shock Masuk set I macam Oh okay I Okay I kena nangis And I tak boleh nangis babe Oh <laughs> Oh my god Susah <laughs> Masa yeah, I faham. brief dengan producer, dia kata cerita ni light-light je. Cerita ni romantik, komedi. Saya so, macam, okay, sekali masuk set, I kena colik, I kena halau, <laughs> I kena maki, I kena marah. Semua benda yang mm, nangis, marah, semua benda I kena... Aku tak tahu. <laughs> faham? Aku macam Sorry. kat situ macam, macam mana aku nak buat ni? Tak, I gelak sebab I tak tahulah siapa yang tipu you. <laughs> I kena scam it. Like you kena scam. I kena scam. <laughs> tak, okay. Cerita dia macam ni. Untuk seorang pelakon wanita, perempuan, dekat Malaysia, you takkan nak cerita yang you tak perlu menangis. Menangis <laughs> tu constant. Betul. <laughs> yeah. Betul. I realise semua cerita yang ada watak wanita mesti kena nangis. Yup. Mm-hmm. Apparently. Lelaki And orang lagi suka. Bila, oh, lelaki tak payah. Lelaki kena lelaki macam-macam. Macam, macam, keluar air mata satu, letak air mata pun dah jadi dah. <laughs> Cantik. Tapi kalau perempuan... <laughs> Ya, yeah, on the tahu. floor, tengah menangis, tengah macam pukul-pukul lantai <laughs> Semua ni Tak, okay I have a funny story to share I mean, lepas ni I nak tanya you lah Macam mana you macam trainkan diri you untuk menangis okay. Tapi for me <coughs> I berlakon as a kid Tapi dia du- dua dunia yang sangat berbeza Okay, bila you're a kid You punya expectation macam dekat sini tau uh-huh. You kena datang set Kalau you tak diva, kalau you tak menangis Kalau you tak macam Oh, I tak nak berlakon hari ni Oh, you dah cukup baik as an actor tau Kerja you I mean time I kecil Adalah yang macam I kena macam menangis Or whatever Tapi sangat jarang Kerja I kebanyakan kali Even for modeling It's just I kena duduk kat situ I kena senyum Sampai lah kat ha, Itu je oh. ha, Kalau I boleh buat benda tu Maksudnya I'm a very successful Child actress Gitu Tapi bila I kembali After like Especially a really long break Di mana I tak train um, Ataupun develop This acting skill langsung I buat this Satu, satu projek And I think I can mention Which project it is Because it was one of my Favorite projects Yang I pernah buat eh. uh-huh. It's called Pengantin 100 Hari And I kerja with the, One of my favorite desi- uh, Directors Sampai sekarang Which is Amor oh. And so she asked me I tak ambil Sepatutnya I tak ambil Watak main pun I was just like Supporting kind of lead Last-last Tak tahu macam mana uh, My watak boleh jadi heroin 
I pun tak tahu sis Tapi tak apa <laughs> So okay. dia tanya I boleh menangis ke tak Dengan penuh keyakinan Sis jawab Ya Lepas tu Amok macam Okay lah Okay so kalau macam tu Sini uh, you menangis je lah babe <laughs> <laughs> dah lah bahasa Melayu I koyak Dah lah apa semua So I had to cry And I just sat there And I remember the hero was Aiman um, And I just was like mm, Tak ada air mata Kejap Kenapa tak ada air mata <laughs> Tak ada air mata um, hmm, Okay uh, Tak tahu nak buat apa How long does it take you To like cry masa tu Time tu dia macam Kalau I tunggu sampai The next day pun Air mata tu tak akan keluar <laughs> Tapi like Lepas I dah paksa diri Dengan stress ni Dengan pandang amo Yang macam dah bagi I Macam peluang ni tau Dah lah mm. I tak boleh cakap Pasal Melayu Dia macam I'm gonna give you this opportunity I was like Okay don't mess it up Don't mess it up, Mimi, don't mess it up. So dia dapat lah But it took me like A little bit of time to get there Tapi lepas tu I was so angry <laughs> With myself kan Kena. Sebab I rasa macam Kalau I betul-betul nak jadi pelakon ni I tak boleh lah Nak biarkan diri I macam ni I Before my next drama I spend like Three days In my room Tak cakap dengan siapa-siapa Tak keluar mana-mana Tengah paksa diri untuk menangis I nak try like Setiap satu cara untuk menangis Sampai I boleh dapatkan benda tu Dalam 0.5 seconds Dari tercakap nangis I nak menangis You know mm-hmm. So I practice dude I was thinking about like Benda yang paling sedih Yang pernah jadi dalam kehidupan I Untuk menangis Lepas tu I fikir like Okay I imagine a fake situation Di mana orang yang I sayang The most of my family Or something jadi dekat orang Boleh I menangis And then you know what I realised For me lah at least Cara yang paling best Untuk I menangis Adalah bila I baca skrip And I bersimpati dekat watak Betul Kan Betul. And itulah cara yang paling efektif juga Sebab kalau kita menangis Contohnya because we imagine Something happen to our family Tak sincere Yes And dia tak sama macam mana yang patut dalam sini Betul. So what was your process Untuk dapatkan air mata ni Sebab this is a skill Yang sangat penting Untuk pelakon perempuan Betul You kena tahu macam nak nangis mm-hmm. Masa I for sure I tak reti nangis babe And then scene tu uh, Apparently scene yang I dah nangis So I Scene sebelum tu I kena halau daripada rumah Dengan hero Macam dia campak bag I Dia macam maki I Kau penipu lah ni 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 semua Lepas tu, kita tak shoot scene tu lagi. Mm-hmm. And then, kita shoot scene selepas tu. Yang mana, I dah nangis seorang-seorang dalam kereta. Macam mana, I nak imagine scene yang I tak buat lagi. Yeah. So, I tak I tak, tak pernah nangis. Mm-hmm. And I, in person, memang I jarang nangis. Sama juga. I, I always like, bottle up my emotion. Kan, I jarang nangis. Kan, kan. So, for me to like cry immediately, memang susah. Mm-hmm. So, masa tu, um, dia orang dah macam, okay, try. Dia bagi method lah, macam try masuk dalam... In character Try to stay at one point pun tak boleh Dan last Dia orang panggil hero tu Masuk dalam kereta Maki I Gila-gila yes. gila. Maki I Mental torture I Sampai I boleh nangis Baru I nangis <laughs> Masa tu <laughs> Ya yeah, actually Masa tu Masa tu dia macam masuk kereta Maki-maki-maki-maki Lepas tu I macam I find it funny Because <laughs> macam Sebab you tahu dia tengah berlakon juga yeah. Untuk dapatkan emosi tu So I macam kind of laugh Lepas tu dia kata Kau asal gelak <laughs> Lepas tu, I macam, okay, okay, he's serious, okay. So, I kena wangi, 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 kena mental torture. And I actually cried because like, whoa, okay, this is serious. Intense lah. Intense. So, I nangis, okay. And then after that, banyak lagi si nangis. Lepas tu, I macam, kena lah tanya, I tanya dia, macam mana nak nak menangis? Mm. So, dia, dia bagilah method macam, oh, ada orang macam pakai Aimo, ada orang macam jolok, ada, jolok tekak bagi huh? nangis. What? Jolok tekak eh, nak muntah. Oh, you tak pernah dengar? Tak, I think jolok jolok tekak ni I akan termuntah lah Yang yeah, ni tu takkan sebab datang Sebab kan kalau you nak muntah jolok tekak You akan macam tear up a bit Oh, you nak sebab sakit kot ah, Janganlah sakit. cederakan diri untuk Woo. Tapi ada that, that, was, that was one of the matter Or you Seriously? stay at one point Bagi mata you kering Or you pergi duduk depan kipas And none of that matter tak. works for tak. me yeah. The only matter that works Is for me to betul-betul menghayati skrip Macam you cakap Yes, yes And then rasa emotion tu You kena macam Take time Relax your body yeah. Baru boleh nangis Yeah faham. You cannot force it Definitely cannot Yeah, you kena and betul-betul Let it just flow Yeah Sebab I rasa Semua cara yang lain tu is like very temporary You akan menangis Satu hmm. dua air mata Lepas tu bila kipas tu Dah tak ada betul. Oh you takkan menangis dah kan? Betul babe And then si nangis Dia bukan sekali je tau Oh yeah Orang tak tahu babe, Orang ni. tak tahu <laughs> Dia banyak kali sebenarnya Sebab kita ada wide shot Kita ada close up Close up orang tu Close up kita And then close up sebelah sini Close up sebelah sini Close up sebelah sini Yeah. So And then kadang-kadang Bila you tengah nangis Tengah scene tu tiba, Oh kejap-kejap eh Sound oh, tak focus, okay Focus 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 Oh focus tak jadi Eh uh-huh. kejap eh Lupa dialog mm-hmm. So you kena keep on menangis Yeah. So dia actually quite panjang Perjalanan tu And satu benda sekarang Yang I dah rasa macam Paling mencabar for menangis scene 
is not untuk wujudkan air mata dah. Betul. Nasib baik kita dah graduate dari <laughs> dari fasa <laughs> tu dalam <laughs> kehidupan kita. Nasib baik alhamdulillah. Ya yeah, kan. Sekarang dia punya isu is untuk dapatkan timing yang cantik. Cantik. Sebab air mata air dah turun. Oh cantik ngam-ngam ada reflection. Wow, lawa semua tu. Fokus salah. Oh. oh kena buat lagi sekali. So then I kena macam jap eh, jap eh, jap eh. So dulu I quite segan tau nak minta orang tunggu I on set. I rasa macam mm. benda tu sangat embarrassing gila. Sekarang I dah berani dah. I macam okay abang, you kena bagi I 2 minit. Sebab I dah faham dah timing mata mm-hmm. sendiri Bila benda tu dah bertakung Nak jatuh macam Okay bang Roll 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 ah, Okay <laughs> Yeah sebab That's how you do it lah Tapi dia sangat susah It dia takes time Dia yang sangat susah lah Dia kena macam practice Practice huh? Tapi sekarang I macam I can cry in seconds Yes girl We yes. love it Come back story I love it I'm proud I macam, It's such an achievement For yeah. me to like cry Of course lah Best gila when I think You bila you dapat Unlock skills You boleh marah You boleh nangis yes. You boleh feel the emotion You rasa macam Yes, yes, I can act. Yes, and and I'm macam, so proud of you, uh, Tausis. Sebab bila you dapat unlock benda ni sebagai seorang pelakon, itulah achievement yang kita ada tahu. Orang if you maybe it's like kita nak menang award or whatever. Semua benda yang no. kita tak ada nak control. The biggest achievement is something yang you boleh control. Bila you rasa macam you tengah berlakon sampai macam you dah hilang diri you. Betul. You terus jadi watak. Betul. Oh, the oh best that's feeling. like the best satisfaction. Kind. Macam, yes, you dapat unlock the skills. Oh, tu best gila You rasa macam level up Okay, good, good Good to do I tak pernah berlakon Just to like be famous I just want to Experience Jadi watak lain Not mm-hmm. myself yeah. That's the best thing About being an actress though. Yeah, dia sejenis Macam creative So, okay. so Back to your your life story ni lah So, you mm-hmm. dah start and, and this heroine thing So, benda ni dah keluar Orang dah terbiasa Nampak you as like You know, Sharifah Rose, the most beautiful girl in Malaysia Yang buat Instagram, right? Mm. And sekarang you dah jadi seorang pelakon Macam mana fans you like terima Your new um, venture? Wow It was <laughs> mm, Not good Masa I first keluar promo I punya drama teaser tu mm, Tiba-tiba orang Kena kecam be. So orang macam Lah, kau nak jadi influencer ke jadi lah Influencer tak payah nak jadi pelakon Pasal Petikaikanlah Orang start petikaikan Kenapa influencer sekarang Jadi pelakon uh, Tak ada background um, Pelakon tiba-tiba jadi pelakon mm-hmm. So I kena kecam teruk gila And then tiba-tiba Baru start pelakon Dapat jadi watak heroin pula tu yeah, yeah, yeah. So Everyone start to like Petikaikan benda tu And cerita tu tak keluar lagi babe. I dah start kena kecam Sebelum cerita tu dah Sebelum keluar Orang tak bagi chance langsung eh Orang tak bagi chance langsung uh-huh. Teaser je baru like yeah. It was just 30 minutes teaser mm-hmm. And orang dah macam You dia ni kayu lah And then masa tu, masa teaser tu keluar, I still tengah shooting tau. Mm-hmm. I tengah shoot and I dapat notification, I viral, Sharifah Rose, Kayu. Cerita tak keluar lagi. And I tengah Cuma shoot. Macam orang tahu you Kayu kalau cerita belum keluar lagi? dia orang dapat info ni ataupun pendapat Sebab ni dari mana? teaser. You know kan promo cerita yeah, dah faham, keluar. Faham. And then masa tu dah shoot half of the episode already. And yang keluar tu first episode. First episode mestilah I macam tak. Lembut lagi yeah, Baru yeah, masih yeah, lagi yeah. keras Actually untuk pengetahuan semua eh, Dia tak di, Kita tak shooting macam um, Secara Apa yang kita nampak dalam skrip mm-hmm. Tapi pada masa yang sama Sebab kan skrip tu Kadang-kadang dia akan keluar In like stages mm-hmm. So kadang-kadang Like when you first start shooting You akan ada Contohnya lah Episod 1 hingga ke episod 3 So Kebanyakan of the early episodes You akan buat first Lepas tu next batch Lepas tu next batch Lepas tu next batch Macam tu So Walaupun dia tak Tersusun mm-hmm. The first few episodes Adalah time yang you baru je Masuk Betul. set Your first couple of days Faham? So macam uh, I dekat set Tiba-tiba I dah kena kecam And I macam Time you tengah shooting my, Masa I tengah shooting And I macam <sighs> Okay How am I gonna get through this And I thought So I dah selalu viral kan <laughs> Jadi influencer ni Hidup kena viral ni Itu biasa Susah nak jadi famous tak Susah Itu biasa You kena hadap je <laughs> So masa tu I macam Okay tak apa Pejam je mata Tutup phone uh, Tak payah tengok orang komen Just shoot je Yeah. And I thought Viral tu dalam 3 hari je Tak Viral tu Last for like a month yeah. Apparently uh-huh. And then like If you google my name It's like All everywhere And then start benda tu I thought just Kat Twitter je lah Keluar dekat Semua Magazine keluar And then um, producer pun dah start keluarkan statement And then some directors pun dah keluarkan statement And then ada artis yeah. pun dah keluarkan statement And then masuk melody And then I pelakon baru yang tak ada experience tiba-tiba masuk industri ni And now everyone knows about me Pelakon baru yang kayu So orang dah cop awal-awal kayu So like I masa kat set tu macam Okay 
Tengah mental breakdown I macam How do I get through this Ada banyak lagi episod mm-hmm. Orang dah cakap I kayu Either I memang nak Biar orang fikir I kayu Or I have to take this opportunity To prove myself That I can actually do it Yeah So I had to work extra hard Like uh-huh. balik shoot Pukul 1 pagi I mandi I akan baca script untuk esok I akan prepare myself Okay so aku kena nangis Esok aku kena, kena macam ni Esok aku kena prepare scene macam ni I I sleep for like three four hours je to like prepare myself lebih Mm-mm. and then macam I had to create chemistry with the hero try to do whatever I can just to make the buktikan, the, buktikan yeah. yang I boleh berlakon so it's hard Yeah. Okay so firstly <laughs> Jangan kita cakap pasal case ni eh. Sebab sebagai seorang pelakon Mustahil lah kalau I tak dengar The argument yang selalu wujud lah so, Okay pelakon ni datang dari mana Pelakon sebenarnya Patut jadi seorang yang pernah berlakon Yang memang ground up Ataupun boleh ke influencer jadi pelakon For me Sebagai seorang pelakon tradisional I rasa macam I faham dua-dua point Tapi pada masa yang sama Apa yang I I rasa I kena macam Sampaikan juga Not just to you Tapi to mm. like the whole industry Is that Tak kisahlah Pelakon tu Datang dari background Influencing macam mana pun Selagi you seorang yang um, Mampu Dan ada niat Untuk bekerja Sedaya upaya mm-hmm. Untuk betul-betul Ambil cabaran tu And untuk jadikan Oh uh, Passionate <laughs> sangat Untuk jadikan diri you Pelakon yang sebenar I think tak kisahlah You datang dari Instagram Betul. pun tak, tak ada masalah Anywhere Yeah It's only a problem Apabila contohnya lah You're seorang like Business person Ataupun you seorang Influencer Ataupun you seorang Whatever Yang masuk ke dalam industri ni Macam ah, Tak kisahlah sangat Pasal aku ni Aku buat je Sebab aku dapat famous. duit ah, Itu memang I tak setuju Tapi apa yang I boleh nampak Pasal you is Even time you tengah hadap semua tu Cara yang you respond tau Is like Really impressive <laughs> I tak rasa kita akan pernah boleh sampaikan point ni Like sebagai seorang celebrity or whatever Bila kita jadi viral And apa kesan mental tu dekat kita pada masa tu Kita tak boleh nak explain kepada seorang yang tak pernah mengalami benda tu But it's so stressful You akan rasa macam you seorang je You tak tahu nak cakap benda ni dengan siapa You cakap dengan family pun Diorang tak faham So you akan rasa macam oh my god And untuk jadi seorang manusia yang ambil benda ni As a challenge Daripada you ada mental breakdown macam you cakap tadi oh. Respect sis Teruk weh okay. Mental breakdown And in the middle of the scene tau Phone you macam ting, 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 ting. Time you tengah berlakon On ah. the project Yang orang tengah kutuk you Yeah weh It's really unfair so, And then I macam uh, Kejap eh kak I cakap kat Edith Kejap Can you give me 10 minutes I just want to Take my time Buang this uh, yeah. Buang this No You Masuk set sekarang Kita nak kejar time Kita tak bagi I masa babe And then I macam just, Okay bagi I pergi toilet kejap mm. So I pergi lima minit je Dia datang kat I balik Macam Jom 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 sekarang 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 Kita nak kerja sini Kerja kerja sini ni, ni, ni. Tak ada masa anak lain ni. So as a pelakon baru Memang They will treat you like that Yeah Memang They don't treat you nicely Dekat SES Pelakon baru Kita semua pernah lalui babe. Kita Semua Saya pun You just have to face it yeah. You just kena Hadap je benda tu yeah. So I Had to just macam Swallow it And then go through it And then finish my scene that day Alhamdulillah lah, cerita tu akhirnya diterima. <laughs> yes, actually, I know exactly what cerita you tengah cakap. And dia bukan saja diterima. Dia dari cerita yang paling viral, oh cerita yang God. paling orang suka, cerita yang last-last orang jatuh cinta. Which, by the way, as orang rakan se-industri, I have to say like, you did an incredible job. I'm so proud of you. Thank sebab you. demi apa-apa yang you tengah hadap pada masa tu, <sighs> you berjaya. You know, menjadikan <laughs> benda ni. Firstly, you go through something yang sangat susah, you takkan hadap benda tu lagi. Don't uh, worry about it You dah boleh uh, macam Bernafas dengan orang uh, dulu Okay You dah lalu You pasal tu And you dapat mewujudkan Something yang sangat-sangat Iconic Sampai sekarang True Yeah I can't believe cerita tu Orang suka I macam Masa cerita tu dah tayang Kita orang still shoot And then cerita tu Dapat sambutan ramai And then bila kita orang tengah Shoot keluar set Shoot kat outdoor People actually come to us Oh my god I will watch a show Seriously And I macam Really Oh my god And then those kind of Comments yang I dapat Yang Bakar semangat saya macam Okay, I have to do better Because people yeah. are going to watch this show yeah. And cerita tu final episode Masuk bulletin utama <laughs> It's like <laughs> the first Dapat tempat pertama For Disney Hotstar And I macam Whoa From That's people my girl. hating And then people love that show I macam Whoa 
great comeback. Yes, of course. And satu lagi yang I kena tekankan juga is that like, tak kisahlah you datang dari background mana. Contohnya kalau you memang seorang pelakon yang datang from ground up, you kerja as extra mm-hmm. sampai you jadi main pun, ada juga yang start kayu, babe. So benda ni tak ada kena mengena dengan you pernah ada. It's a process sebenarnya. Yeah. You tak ada lahir-lahir terus pandai berlakon. You tak yes. lahir-lahir terus berlari. Exactly. Kan? You kena go through that phase. And lakonan ni is something yang walaupun you belajar macam mana pun, there's some stuff yang you akan belajar on set. You kena belajar on set. Contohnya kan, mungkin orang tak pernah nampak. Orang ingat macam berlakon ni secara you mainkan emotion depan kamera. Benda tu boleh macam pergi kelas. Mm-hmm. Tapi let's say kalau you tengah buat a scene with another actor and diorang tengah buat close up actor tu dengan OS. Kalau you bergerak bahu terlalu banyak, you akan blocking actor tu. Betul. Macam mana you nak belajar ni kalau you tak pernah masuk set? Betul You can experience benda tu Dia macam sejenis itu. practical thing Betul Kalau you belajar macam mana pun You takkan It's not the same Sampai you masuk set Betul Sebab every character Every set is different Betul. Different environment Different cast Different director Different yeah. expectation So it's always a new experience Bila you masuk different set Mm-mm. So you tak boleh cakap macam Oh aku dah hebat Berti jadi aku dah boleh berlakon Mm-mm. Tak It's yeah. it's a new thing you, It's a Never ending process of learning Baru nak cakap I think sebagai pelakon Kita tak akan boleh Dan tak akan capai lah eh, the, Tempat yang kita memang hebat Sebagai seorang pelakon Sebab setiap kali Kita kena belajar benda baru Betul But at the same time Apa yang boleh dikatakan dekat sini Is you seorang manusia yang hebat Sebab you tak mengalah We have enough room for everyone Exactly Kalau you nak jadi pelakon pun Just go and give it a try Exactly Kalau you tak jadi then fine You just find another thing That you can yeah. be great at Exactly Tapi kalau you cuba dengan in class I think that's a really good thing, man. Yeah. And also, Malaysia ni is a very, very small country. Kalau you yeah. jadi seorang, you know, like, pelakon yang nak berlakon saja, ada je yang jadi penyanyi, ada yang jadi influencer, mm-hmm. ada influencer. Because, why? Because industri kita tak cukup besar-besar-besar-besar macam tu untuk you buat satu je benda. Betul. <laughs> kan? So, I think it's a very good thing. And Which I hope you you lagi eksperimen tau dengan benda-benda lain. Sebab selagi kemampuan tu ada, why would you waste it? Betul. Mm-hmm. And I don't agree people cakap macam, dia ni famous Dia ni boleh berlakon Sebab dia cantik No oh, Different betul-betul. character Kita ada different requirements Character hmm. ni I tak boleh jadi Seorang yang uh, Sexy Yeah. We need someone yang That can actually be sexy Or I tak boleh bawa watak Sebagai um, Lelaki jantan ke apa yeah, of course. We have like... enough room For everyone So jangan petikakan Oh kenapa dia ni dapat job ni Kenapa dia dapat yeah. jadi heroin yeah. Memang dia tak ada kan Cerita tu Untuk watak tu Untuk dia tapi yeah. maybe watak you lain. Yeah. So just welcome everyone and treat everyone the same. Betul. And berlakon ni sebenarnya teamwork. Bukan you seorang. Betul. Tak boleh just macam overshadow everyone. You kena chemistry, you kena ngam dengan everyone. Mm-hmm. Dia macam rezeki masing-masing lah. And I yeah. think we should just allow everybody the opportunity. Betul. Especially kalau orang tu masuk dengan ikhlas. Betul. Tapi, okay. So for you, you've done social media. You pernah buat modelling. Sekarang you dah transition kepada jadi seorang pelakon. Tapi pada masa yang sama, you also are an entrepreneur. Mm-hmm. You a business woman girl. She used that. Mm, she studied for <laughs> <laughs> So sekarang, you dah startkan your own brand. And mm-hmm. so like, bila I tengah macam Google pasal latar belakang your brand. Sebab I pernah tengok ini Hari Rose kan. Mm-hmm. And like, um, and of course I know that That you have this brand and stuff like that But when I google I dapat tahu yang sebelum dia jadi Hari Rose Which is apa yang Your brand sekarang mm-hmm. You named it something else yeah. Which is Second Tom And mm-hmm. there was like A little bit of controversy Pasal tu Normally I tak suka sentuh Controversy dekat sini Sebab I want it to be a safe space Oh it's okay Tapi pada masa yang sama I think there's a story here yang I pun nak tahu sebenarnya mm-hmm. Apa yang jadi Dan kenapa dia jadi And like what's the Your side of the story Sebab selama ni I tak rasa you pernah dapat pun Peluang untuk airkan Betul. That thing So um, Last year I think bulan 10 Me and my partner macam My partner proposed to me She wanted to do A hijab line with me Mm-mm. So They proposed nama Skuntum And I love that name I, I love it too Because you're Rose Yeah So We got the inspiration Because my name is Rose Bunga So kita tak nak macam Oh bunga just, just, Of course lah yeah. Benda terlalu basic Yeah So kita ambil Skuntum So I macam Okay let's do a research About Skuntum ni Ada tak orang pakai And ada lah. Memang, I akui benda tu ada. Dekat, if you search dekat Instagram, ada sekuntum apatah untuk kedai bunga, uh-huh, uh, sekuntum for apa ID, architecture. Ada names tapi different industry line. Yeah. So, I macam, okay, it's safe to use this name sebab tak ada orang yang jual tudung and guna nama ni juga. Mm-hmm. So, we proceed production, proceed printing, dan proceed everything, semua bla bla bla. A week before launch Kita dah keluarkan teaser Tiba-tiba Ada orang komen Eh 
dia ni tiru nama brand ni lah Skuntum. Mm-hmm. So, I macam click on that profile. Nama dia Skuntum. Mine is T-U-M. And then brand tu T-O-M. And I macam, okay, dia jual turun juga. Okay, but we don't tiru any design from her. Completely different. And account dia dah lama tak aktif, babe. Mm-hmm. The last active was like way months ago yang dah lama sangat. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's why bila kita orang buat research, nama dia tak keluar mm. masa kita orang buat research. So, I macam, okay, I call my partner. I macam, um, macam mana ni? Um, kita ada tiru nama orang ke? Like, Mesti can we... Mesti sangat stress pada masa I, tu. Benda dah print, babe. Benda dah Banyak print. Banyak capital dah keluar, dah modal dah keluar. Sangat. And then, macam tinggal a few days nak launch. Lagi three days masa tu. Lepas tu, I macam, okay, do we proceed? Do we not proceed? Macam mana ni? And then I cakap, okay, tak apa. Let's just try to contact that person first. Mm-mm. Sebab yang komen tu, owner dia. Yang komen dekat my picture. So, we tried to contact that person. Try to discuss macam... Um, try to work in between lah. Like, win-win Untuk situation. Macam, yeah, it's uh, nice of you to reach out kan. Kalau dia nak that name, then okay. Kita, kita, we can try to work things out lah. Kalau dia tak data aktif, dia tak serious in the business. Mm-hmm. We try to buy the name from her. Tapi... The response that we got from her wasn't really nice and she doesn't want to cooperate. They just cakap macam, korang kan nama besar, tukar je lah nama. Mm-hmm. It was so easy for her to just say that, well, kita orang dah macam, everything dah siap, just nak launch je. So, orang dah macam, cakap, I ni copycat, orang cakap, I ni tiru, padahal design kita orang completely different, babe. Tak sama langsung. Mm-hmm. The logo, it was similar sebab Uh, was Poppy Flower In my defense Kita hire A logo designer To create that logo They propose like A few logo And we pick that one Bukan yang kita orang tiru Macam mm-hmm. Oh kita orang tiru Sama lah macam dia yeah, yeah, yeah. We actually hire someone To create a logo yeah. And then macam And I like that logo Satu lagi benda yang Everybody cakap Just as a third party Yang tak terlibat pun Dalam situation ni yes, Sekuntum tu Orang semua dengar perkataan tu Akan fikir pasal bunga So kalau logo you ada bunga Memang Kan <laughs> And then macam We I macam Lost gila masa tu We tried to contact uh, Logo designer Yang designkan logo tu yeah. Macam Try to get their explanation Like Korang, korang ada tiru ke Korang ah, ada tiru ke Sebab logo ni daripada korang And then sama dengan brand ni Like, what is going on? Like, I need your explanation. Basically, I macam tersepit in uh-huh. the middle of the situation. So, that logo designer punya team just didn't respond. Langsung macam... Oh, sampai sekarang? Sampai sekarang. Oh, Wait. they got their payment and then they just don't want to get involved. So, I macam, <gasps> this is so unfair. Yeah. And then, we... Sekarang orang dah kecam air, semua blah, blah, blah. And then, I macam, okay, tak apalah, just proceed. Dengan uh, launch ni yeah. We try to see first yeah. Sebab Kita tak buat apa-apa lah, Langsung salah And then We dah, pres- dah beli website Orang tu tak beli website So We thought We could win in this situation And then macam Sebabkan Benda tu sangat Controversial Orang tak boleh nak Macam beli sangat Because they're scared I think Masa tu mm-hmm. And it doesn't Go well sangat The first launch And I macam Okay lah This is bad. Like, mm. I don't want macam benda ni jadi macam ni kan. And die down like this. And then you can tell you dekat nama you Yeah. Uh, and it's not just my hardware. It's my team hardware. It's my yeah. designer hardware. Kita orang actually put a lot of work to make this happen. Yeah. So, I rasa um, dah se- t- orang yang sebelah sana tu tak nak corporate. Dia tak nak bagi nama. And macam it's best to just tukar je nama. Yeah. Walaupun Terpaksa membazir lah. Mm. We had some loss. Daripada kita macam try to fight this case. Benda prolong lama. I rasa tak worth it langsung. And it akan jadi sang- sangat pening untuk semua pihak terlibat. Betul. Ni. Kalau you nak buka case pun, you kena bayar lagi. Yeah. And then kalau ni bayar lagi, you kena... It's, it's so messy. So yeah. I cakap dengan my team, let's just change name. Like, I'm so sorry. We had to restart all over again. Benda pun dah proceed. So, jual je yang mana boleh. Yeah. And then we start fresh. And Alhamdulillah sekarang, the new name. Hi Rose. Okay. Yeah. I think the name Skuntung tu very bad juju lah. <laughs> bad juju <laughs> gila. <laughs> And then, apparently after a month of the launch, brand tu pula keluarkan orang punya collection. So, uh-huh. macam tak takpelah. 
maybe rezeki orang daripada situ pergi yeah. aje lah let's yeah. just as your friend i mean like cari kita bercakap pun i dah boleh agak like for me kan i takkan sokong apa-apa punya like tiruan lah sebab i rasa dalam industri kreatif especially it's very important untuk kita ada idea sendiri kalau mm-hmm. tak kita takkan ada usp Sampai bila kita nak tiru orang Kita takkan berjaya pun macam tu Sebab tak ada apa-apa original mm-hmm. And when I speak to you I boleh rasa yang you bersependapat Kan So I think dalam this situation Like Bila I fikirlah Sebab kita kena bagi Orang tu ruang juga Dari perspektif dia mm-hmm. Mesti dia sangat shocking Untuk rasa macam Dia punya nama sudah Whatever 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 Tapi Pada masa yang sama Like I feel like You you did try Like you reached out and everything And Apa-apa pun hopefully lah Dekat mana-mana dia ada sekarang mm-hmm. Dia akan teruskan dengan Business dia Berjaya Sebab yeah. Macam acting juga There's space for everybody man Betul yeah. I don't wish anyone Of course not Bad at all Of course not Yeah So Tak tahu lah Tapi Itu just satu case And mm. I'm happy Yang you finally lah Dapat airkan Your side of the story Tapi sekarang You dah ubah nama tu Jadi Hari Rose And nama tu macam Paling membawa rezeki Untuk you Alhamdulillah Yes Your business is I'm doing So well so girl happy. Yes, I know I see it everywhere Sebab you ada your one design I pun nak cakap dengan ni dekat, dekat Rose juga Your one design tu yang dia macam flower Tapi dia also kotak Tapi dia macam buat otak air pening Bila I nampak Tapi dia sangat-sangat Like dia macam Dia macam monogram for you guys yeah. tau Dekat mana-mana I pergi I nampak berjuta-juta orang pakai macam tu I macam wow This girl's going places That's the marketing a business degree It's tu It's so nice yeah. Like to see people pakai Benda yang macam You put a lot of hard work You macam Create and then Nampak orang pakai And real life Macam wow And then people actually yeah. love it I rasa macam That's another satisfaction Yang I achieve Macam of best course gila lah. Of course of course. It's just one of the things That makes me happy lah mm-hmm. Bila Tengok orang Love the things that you do Tapi What I think is so special About you Yang macam boleh bercakap Like volumes tau Pasal you punya personality Macam mana Is the fact that kita boleh nampak like a pattern from your life Which is bukan saja dari segi lakonan Tapi dari segi bisnes juga Apabila you menghadap apa-apa cabaran Ataupun dugaan Ataupun obstacle like Whatever lah you nak cakap um, Kita boleh nampak lah Rose Orang yang akan cuba mengatasi situation Dia tak akan mengalah Takkan lah kita nak just stuck in that position Betul. forever kan Tapi walaupun you cakap macam tu Sebab you macam berpendapat macam tu Ada ramai tau yang akan rasa macam Alamak cabaran ni macam too much for me or whatever And it's like very impressive untuk jumpa seorang yang Sangat um, Macam nak cakap ya like, like you're very firm in your pendapat yang you mm-hmm. nak buat benda ni You akan buat Kalau you ada cabaran pun You akan cuba sedayu payu untuk macam Buat yang terbaik Yeah because yeah. You, maybe you cannot be the best But you can always do your best In everything that you can do With the things yang you mampu Mm-mm. Maybe I tak mampu sampai tahap ni Tapi at this stage I mampu sampai tahap ni So I can macam do my very best To deliver whatever that I can do Yeah. So Bila macam I go through This kecam ke Whatever challenges that I had to go through I can always remind myself like Why did I start? And I will make sure the ending tu I can jadi beautiful ending. I tak nak benda tu tiba-tiba macam Shit, I regret this decision. Yeah, faham. Whatever decision yang you buat dalam hidup you You tak patut regret your decision tau. Faham? You always have to yeah. make it the best. Tapi you know tak, that is a that is the sifat of someone yang successful. Sebab orang yang successful semua ada characteristic ni which is like diorang takkan senang terima macam oh tak boleh ke okay tak payah. Ah, tak ada, tak ada sifat macam tu. So I'm I'm proud of you and I rasa ada banyak lagi yang you akan capai. InsyaAllah. Yeah. I, mean, I believe everyone had that skill. I mean, you don't stop. If you believe that you can do it, just go. Buat okay. je. Buat yeah. je. Jangan rasa macam oh, aku tak boleh buat. Mm. Uh, orang cakap aku tak boleh buat, tak boleh. Tak boleh. Yeah. You kena just Go out from your bubble Try to explore As much as you can Especially in your 20s Yeah You tak boleh just do one thing You know Yeah especially in Yeah betul betul Kalau you suck at Singing Then maybe you're just not meant for singing Maybe try dancing <laughs> Maybe try dancing yeah. If you cannot do dancing Then try acting mm. Banyak lagi benda skills Yang boleh Explore Exactly In your 20s And kita hidup sekali je Betul Explore so, je Yeah betul betul Kalau It turned out well then great for you. If it turned out well then fine. Mm-hmm. Proceed. Another thing. <laughs> Betul? Hidup ni like mudah. That. Yeah. <laughs> okay so I ada satu lagi soalan sebelum kita masuk ke dalam segmen kedua which is the fan question. Mm-hmm. And it's okay so setakat ni dia dah jadi seorang influencer, dah jadi seorang model, dah jadi actress, entrepreneur. What's next for you? Um, I also don't know. I can cakap I can random. <laughs> <laughs> I tak tahu. I never plan to be a model. I never plan to be an actor. Yeah. I never plan to be a businesswoman. I just opportunity to datang. 
I buat and then it turn out well then yeah great let's yeah. try new thing faham tapi yang penting I tak boleh menari I tak boleh menyanyi <laughs> okay other things maybe but what else can I try I don't know maybe a race <laughs> ah, you tiba <laughs> orang jangan terkejut <laughs> kalau dalam 2023 Rose macam I am now a F1 candidate kita semua macam kita ah, tak tahu boleh lah Rose boleh I tak tahu <laughs> it's random yeah tiba <laughs> I bangun macam I nak try benda ni lah okay let's do it <laughs> Ini bukan just hari Rose lah. Ini akan jadi tahun Rose yang akan <laughs> mungkin is my year. tahun yeah. Rose. That's right. Okay, jom kita masuk ke dalam the second segment because dia ada macam kena-mena juga dengan uh, New Year and everything mm-hmm. because yours is actually the last episode of the year for yeah. 2022. And so this is the fan question untuk minggu ni. Mm-hmm. So, tahun 2022 dah hampir ke penghujung tapi saya rasa saya belum capai target saya lagi. Bagaimana untuk terus maju dan merasakan yang saya dah capai sesuatu? Apa matlamat awak untuk 2023? I rasa orang ni kerja corporate. Cara dia, dia bahasakan sentence sangat-sangat proper. Wow. Tapi basically the question is like um, bagaimana untuk terus maju dan merasakan yang saya dah capai sesuatu apa matlamat awak <coughs> saya lah awak untuk 2023? So basically macam dia tak achieve lagi apa dia nak. I think apa yang I faham is that dia rasa dia belum capai semua targets dia dalam 2022. Mm-hmm. So, how well, do you... for me, I believe that a lot can happen in a year, mm-hmm. and a lot can happen in a month, mm-hmm. a lot can happen in a week. So you cannot just limit yourself just in a year. Mm-hmm. Maybe your target need takes three years, mm-hmm. five years, ten years, and so be it. Mm-hmm. Like everyone have their own pace. Betul. Maybe. Kita kan macam We all go through the same phases of life yeah. Cuma different timeline like, I believe you pun Kena go through of course, Process uh. Kena berlaku semua Normal lah like, Everyone go through that phase But at their own pace You know You cannot compare yourself yeah. Oh kenapa dia ni Boleh jadi successful At such a young age Kenapa dia ni kahwin awal Kenapa aku tak dapat ni Kenapa dia dapat ni You cannot compare yourself Because Hidup you Allah dah tertulis Memang jalan you macam ni mm-hmm. Macam I cakap tadi Whatever challenges that you go through, dia takkan pernah habis. Sebenarnya challenges you dalam hidup you akan sentiasa upgrade Betul. lagi susah. That what matures you. You don't mature with your age. You actually yeah. mature with your life experiences. Betul. Orang kata, dia ni dah season. Yeah. Dah cukup season dalam hidup yeah, dia. Faham? So, just whatever challenges that you go through sebenarnya ada hikmah. Maybe it helps you to um, level up in your life. Yeah. Kalau you rasa you tak achieve lagi apa yang you nak achieve, maybe try to switch something in your life. Mm-hmm. Macam masa I jadi influencer, I rasa macam stop. Like, takkan aku nak jadi influencer forever? Mm-hmm. Like, I need to do something else. Then, tiba-tiba I jadi random, okay, maybe try acting. Maybe you should try new things. Maybe you should go out from your bubbles. Your comfort from zone. From your too. comfort zone, mm-hmm. try new things. Benda tu memang tak selesa, tapi sebenarnya benda yang tak selesa tu can actually make you better person and you akan discover benda yang you rasa macam wow i can't believe i can actually do this so, so go out and try new things mm-hmm. kalau you rasa tak boleh achieve lagi maybe it's somewhere yang you tak nampak lagi mm-hmm. uh. i tak ada apa-apa nak tampak i rasa dia dah dia dah macam sampaikan semua poin yang <laughs> ada dalam otak i juga <laughs> cuma like okay for my experience um i kerja dalam industri lakonan dah 27 tahun wow Yeah, dude. Wow. My whole life, I start when, okay, 26 lah. I baru je 27. So, I did 20, You started 26. when? I started when I was 10 months old. Really? Yeah, I was a child actor. Oh my God, 10 months? Yeah, yeah, modeling semua time tu. Wow. Yeah, so I dah kerja 26 tahun. And kadang-kadang, like, I pernah lah dalam career, I, I pernah rasa macam, alamak, kenapa macam lepas dah banyak sangat pengalaman ni, I still tak rasa macam I dah sampai dekat satu tahap di mana I ada career yang stable. Ataupun, bila I kembali as an adult, orang kata, oh, artis baru, artis baru, artis baru. Benda tu macam buat I terasa sebab macam, baru ke? I, dah lama first dah industry. Aku first nomination, aku 6 tahun. Wow. Ya yeah, tu. Wow. So, you nak kata I baru tu macam, Kaji. benda tu menyakit hati. You know? Tapi pada masa yang sama, bila I fikir balik, I rasa macam, it's not just that Um, you know, progress is more important than perfection Itu memang fakta lah Lepas I dah kerja 26 tahun ni Ada je masa yang I fikir macam um, Kenapa I tak capai benda ni Like much much earlier Adakah I tak, tak, tak cukup bagus Or like why And bila I fikir balik I rasa macam kita Kena betul-betul bersedia Untuk pencapaian kita Kalau tak, kalau dia datang Pada masa yang terlalu awal 
Kita tak ready tau Betul Kita tak ready nak handle So bila I fikir macam Even in 2022 Apa yang I rasa Is like my personal achievement Kalau benda tu datang In like 2013 Adakah saya cukup um, Ready Untuk receive pada masa tu Ataupun saya akan dapatkan That good thing And I takkan tahu Macam mana nak handle I tak tahu macam mana Nak really You know um, Membuatkan dia Dengan cara yang terbaik Like contohnya right Studio Sembang mm. I wish I started this earlier Tapi pada masa yang sama Kalau I mulakan Studio Sembang Five years ago di mana I tak ada like cukup support Ataupun I tak ready untuk buat benda ni Dia tak akan jadi successful Betul. So really setiap satu benda Akan jadi pada masa yang memang berpatutan dalam kita dengan kita And kalau I wish for studio sembang to come earlier in my life I still rasa like maybe Dia bukan time yang baik lah untuk I Everything happens at the right time Everything happens for a reason So like hopefully kita dapat jawab soalan tu Dengan cara akan membantu siapa-siapa mm-hmm. keluar sana And just like you can have the patience Patience is so important Yeah, Discipline, because patience. Mm, betul. The more you force something, the less likely dia akan jadi dengan cara yang baik for you. Betul. Never Even force anything. Dapat. Though it will mm-hmm. come naturally. Yes, exactly. So hopefully that helps. But now we're gonna move on to the last segment, which is also like one of my favorite segments because it's the paling lighthearted punya segment yang quite fun. Okay. Um, is the rapid fire. So dalam setiap satu segment yang I briefkan Rose, yang ni je lah yang I tak briefkan langsung. <laughs> Janganlah nampak tak? Because you are I love my rapid fire. Apa ni? <laughs> tak lah. Okay, this quite easy, quite easy, quite easy. Okay, the first question is, what is your favorite K-pop song? <laughs> See, it's gonna be one of them. I don't really listen to K-pop. You don't listen to K-pop? I don't really listen to K-pop. <laughs> Seriously? No. Oh my god, bro. Wait, 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 wait. I do listen Satu to... Satu pun tak ada? I do, I do, I do. Blackpink. Ah, Blackpink. Blackpink in your area. Blackpink um, in your area. Wait, wait. Oh, actually, I suka lagu Rose from Blackpink. Oh. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's... <laughs> <laughs> Because it's my name <laughs> And then she's actually really good Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah. I love her vocals um, She's uh, Shanti do It's maybe Tapi she got wait, the same Like what all of the song? roses Semua do macam Sifat sama No, it's like Gone tak silap eh Gone eh is Yang tu I tak pernah dengar I pun tak sure ke? I Gone eh Oh, Ben tengah nodding kat belakang tu Dia macam Yo, yo, I know gone I like K-pop <laughs> Sempat je cakap Betul ke? <laughs> See, okay so Aku tak rasa lah buah habis Tak, I akan hantar you link Betul, 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 betul Ah, oh, dia, dia, dia Betul ah. I actually listen to that Blackpink song Blackpink punya fans sangat intense <laughs> Kalau salah, I aku takut I takut salah buah <laughs> so, <laughs> Memang betul I, <laughs> I actually listen to the song And I actually really love it Because it's a breakup song It's actually a sad song Tapi sedap so, I suka melody dia Oh, nice Yeah Okay, I can hantar you a link Of all of like my favorite K-pop songs And oh, then you can dengar okay. Yes, Um, but my favorite K-pop song Of all time Is Fancy by Twice Have you heard it? Ah, uh, dia macam yeah, Tapi I tahu Twice <laughs> Yeah, I twice is really I cool. know. But that song is my group. jam, girl. I'm gonna send it to you after this. Okay, okay. so you can you can hear it Okay. Okay, so the next question is favorite food? Nasi lemak. Oh, okay, standard lah. I feel like it's so versatile. You can eat anytime. Anytime, any time. And yeah. it's sedap. Mm-hmm. Depends like, on probably, like... Probably, wait, wait. Maybe nasi lemak and burger. Nasi lemak and burger? Yeah. Oh. Any types of burger. Tapi you bukan actually... sekali lah. Cerita dia kan. You just Not like so nasi kali. lemak and then Tapi burger. Tapi ada nasi lemak burger, you know? Ah, babe, ada nasi lemak cake though. Huh? Ha. <laughs> dia ada oh. dua jenis There's one that is like A nasi lemak cake Which is like um, The nasi And then they put all of the Kuah-kuah on top And then this oh, This sekeliling ni With cucumber lah. Yes Tapi ada juga Cake yang macam manis Cake manis Yang nasi lemak punya flavour Ada juga You can search Whoa. Yeah I pernah order For somebody's birthday And it was like it, Is it good? Dia Interesting Dia macam sejenis Macam you akan jadi Sangat istimewa Kepada orang tu Sebab takkan pernah Ada orang bagi dia Nasi lemak cake Gitu Yeah, I don't know. we will. Okay, I will order it okay. for your next birthday. This is macam saya yakin. Have you seen the nasi lemak um, sushi? No. Super the beef nasi lemak sedap sushi. Ke? Yeah. Quite sedap lah sebab dia memang nasi. Pun, I'm starting to dia, question my favorite food now. I think she's starting to question me. Dia macam okay. So, okay. So <laughs> like I know nasi lemak, but then not, not so much of that. Okay, so send rose K-pop link. Send rose. Uh, nasi lemak cake Okay, ada banyak kerja air lepas ni Tak apa, I can do it <laughs> Okay <laughs> <laughs> What is your um, go-to makeup product? Like, kalau you hanya boleh pilih satu je Satu saja yeah. Concealer <gasps> Same Kan? Same like... Okay, I paling benci bila orang jawab Like, mascara or something Like, okay, faham lah You sangat effortless Tapi for me, kalau concealer tak ada I, I tak boleh, babe I tak boleh hidup sama concealer Sama juga My dark circle is really bad I sleep really late So faham. I need concealer for my life Faham I need, I need concealer Faham 
If I die pun, I can please put concealer <laughs> Dekat mayat I, please I can hantar makeup reference <laughs> Please <laughs> Kan? Ya yeah. Kalau yeah. kalau the English people, they don't ada makeup artist for Ya, yeah, makeup, ya, yeah, faham tak. Pula, kan? Oh my god For me it's like concealer Not just for under eye bags Tapi untuk kulit juga Sebab okay. Bila kita bekerja setiap hari Makin lama makin rosak kulit kita So Betul. makin kita kena pakai concealer Betul Ay, Susah And you can highlight You can cover You, yeah, you can, can do a lot Put concealer all over your face As a mm-hmm. foundation Betul I can just bring concealer And lift Patutlah dia sangat flawless sister Sebenarnya tak Sebenarnya concealer That's the trick <laughs> That's the one Okay, so what is the favorite um, drama ataupun favorite like project yang you pernah berlakon? Ha, huh. mm, well surprisingly my f- wait, how can I choose? Macam best dari segi set. your favorite bukan bukan dari segi your favorite character yang you pernah bawa. Character yang paling dekat dengan diri Rose yang sebenar. Hmm. Semua tak. <laughs> I think I would choose my first drama. Okay. Kekasih Hati Musa Bodyguard because that was my first and it creates an impact in my career acting. Yeah. Walaupun mm, the journey was so hard. Mm-hmm. Tapi I love the impact. Mm-hmm. Kalau best set, I suka Kepunya Hati. Because like the cast, uh, the director. I rasa every day I bangun, I look forward nak pergi set. Macam happy wow. gila. Itu like pengalaman kerja yang terbaik lah bila you dapat sebab macam tu. Betul. Yeah. Sometimes set yang macam not so great. Tapi cerita tu macam letup gila. Ya. Yeah. Tapi kalau set tu macam best gila. Tapi cerita tu macam biasa je. Ya. Yeah. Semua benda you tak boleh kawal sebenarnya. Betul. Habis. You tak boleh dapat everything in time. Ya. Yeah. 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 Tapi at least you enjoy the process lah. Betul. It's tu yang the penting fun. juga. Ya. Yeah. Got it. So your next one is um, Apa content favourite you Untuk tengok dekat TikTok Or Instagram Like Video macam mana You suka comedy ke You suka makeup tutorial ke You suka Tak tahulah apa lagi yang ada Story time ke uh, hmm. Ke challenges ke Sebab kejap lagi I nak buat TikTok dengan you juga Oh okay okay <laughs> <laughs> I have to pick one For me I suka story time I suka orang bercakap Pasal I akan main And I akan macam Kemas rumah ha? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because macam Dia menarik but, mm, Interesting Because dance I cannot dance Kalau menyanyi pun I cannot sing I mean I I enjoy watching it Tapi I can't do it Mm-mm. I like to watch people Macam dance I suka orang buat uh, Tutorial school yeah. yeah I suka tengok tutorial Yang make up tu yeah. Like the challenges Lepas tu I memang bodoh So time I tengah buat eyeliner I macam pernah nampak Dia orang macam Buat dua-dua eyeliner Pada masa yang sama Whoa. Did you see the video He took two eyeliners And he was like Are you kidding? Sumpah And then I tried to do it Eyeliner pun macam sini-sini oh. <laughs> Teruk Tak payah lah Kita buat challenge Tak payah-tak payah Kita tengok je lah Kita tak payah cuba Kita tengok je Tapi dekat 4IP I selalu keluar yang tarik-tarik Card readings tu Oh my god Yang tu pun I macam nervous lah babe Takut Oh takut Takut nak tengok Macam Sometimes it's like so spot on Ya Tapi macam Dia macam targeted dekat you tau Ha Tapi macam I know I can't believe in this kind of stuff Ya Tapi it's so spot on You're just so shit And that's the Zara camera Faham Selalu keluar kat FYP I Tapi maybe lah Kadang-kadang I rasa macam benda tu Sebenarnya just psychology Kalau Really? You think, yes Sumpah I mean I don't know man I don't want to offend anybody But like Apa yang I rasa Is like dalam subconscious kita Kita sudah ada dah Semua jawapan Untuk di- kehidupan diri kita sendiri So apa bila kita dengar something Apa yang kita receive Dari benda tu Sebenarnya datang dari kita punya otak Bukan oh. sebenarnya dari benda tu So kalau you rasa benda tu relate It's because of Apa yang memang dah wujud Dalam otak you hmm. So dia bukan magic Ataupun dia bukan whatever Itu algorithm je Tunjukkan you video ni Kalau okay. you tak rasa you connect you tak, you tak connected lah Dengan benda tu tapi you connected sebabkan idea tu sebenarnya dah ada dalam subconscious you. Oh. Itu apa pendapat saya lah. Sebab kalau tak, saya rasa benda ni scary. Dua macam mana you boleh cari air dekat dalam rumah saya macam ni. Oh, betul tu. Yeah. Tiba-tiba macam, I know you're wearing a red colour. Uh, you, <laughs> you have a red hair. Whoa. Your phone selalu tengok eh. Kamera tu selalu on. Whoa. Tiba, tak, 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 tak. I'm kidding, 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 I'm kidding. I'm joking. Tapi phone scary tu. Ya. Yeah. Let's not go there. Let's not go there. That's a whole other conversation. <laughs> okay, so kita ada dua je soalan lagi, mm-hmm. which is the first one is about 2023. What is your number one? Um, is it Azam? Azam. Azam. What is your number one Azam for 2023? Hmm, I nak belajar masak kot. Serious? <laughs> because I know I can cook. It's just I'm. Um, I tak suka. I tak suka process. Yes. Masak. I tak suka cutting cutting. Thank you. Cari. Cari bahan And then nak kena kemas lagi mm. You dah penat potong You exactly. dah penat campak yeah. Okay dah jadi Lepas tu nak kena kemas lagi Yes Saya sokong <laughs> I just 
don't like the process but I like the food. Faham? But I pun sama macam you ni macam kali pertama I jumpa orang yang memang sama kepala dengan I on this thing right? hmm. Sebab I rasa macam bukan I tak boleh masak Boleh I rasa I kalau I jumpa I boleh yeah. With recipe lah yeah, Kalau tiba-tiba lah. tiba nak campak jadi Agak-agak tu memang tak lah But tak like lah. I could do it I just don't want to do it You know I mean I have a better thing to do <laughs> I like I have to work from 7 to 1 a.m. Like I don't have time to cook. Betul betul. And benda tu jadi penat. That's why everyone says it's like a labor of love kan. Yeah. yeah. Terima kasih kepada mak-mak kita yang memang menghabiskan banyak masa Thank untuk masak. God. Kita. I'm so glad I live with my parents. Faham. <laughs> I don't think I can survive kalau I duduk seorang. Faham. Ke. Masalah ni mak I terlalu pandai masak. Sebab tu I tak boleh masak. Kalau mak I tak pandai maybe I would have jadi like a tukang pemasak ke you know like a chef or something. Betul. My mom is too good man. Like why would I take over? Kan. Like tapi nanti kalau oh. Takpelah tak payah fikir tu nanti You kena cari um, Maybe Azan 2023 I can tahu I can Ha huh, Mana tahu tiba-tiba 2023 Dia buat, buat cooking show Hey guys Yeah, yeah. Recipes with Rose There is a bit uh, Karu Aming I'm gonna be your best friend <laughs> <laughs> I suka dah tengok Karu Aming Tapi hey, dia punya Tengok je lah You pernah try tak Dia punya sambal Tak pernah Tapi I pun tak pernah Selalu sold out order. kan Yeah that's why I dah try order banyak kali And Tapi I, I tak pernah dapat So I heard it's so good Hmm I heard so Tapi tak makan pedas That's why I mean it's so good But it's so sold out You makan pedas ke? Makan lah Tapi sikit-sikit lah I kena oh, like, I tak makan pedas That's why I just tak try oh, sambal yes. oh. Faham, faham. It's okay. I try for you And I akan bagi tahu you And then you boleh masak lah Dia punya sambal Maybe I can buat cooking show ah, Mana tahu 2023 yeah. hmm. I trust you sis I think you can do it So your last um, question Which is a question Yang kita memang nak setkan Dalam studio sembang Sebab I rasa I memang pelawak lah Dalam diam so, <laughs> What is your best joke? My best Mm-hmm. I don't have a joke Oh, your sister Tapi I suka dengar joke Okay And I mudah terhibur So okay. why don't you make a joke Okay I Kalau I gelap Maybe joke tu best okay, okay, Kalau okay, I tak okay, gelap okay. Then I'm sorry Amelia It's um. just not that funny <laughs> <laughs> I I don't I'm, I tak reti buat joke Okay um. Whoa <laughs> Serious Ooh, This is very serious business You know I dah ada banyak job Tapi setiap kali Setiap minggu I tanya soalan ni Lepas tu Diorang tanya I balik Job I So I dah habis dah Semua job kat sini um, Okay Okay Okay, okay. Uh, Kucing apa Tak boleh miau <coughs> Kucing apa tak boleh miau Are you ready? Kucing tak padamu Tidak Tapi that's a good answer I'm gonna steal it For the next one Kucing Sarawak <laughs> I'm gonna laugh because like <laughs> I'm gonna be a good friend. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> she got me. She got okay, me. La. You thought that I don't like I made such a bad joke on on Studio Sepa like three weeks ago, and then it ended up on the internet. And orang cakap, I tak gelak sebab joke tu kelak. I gelak sebab kesian lah dekat dia. Memang hamba sangat lah <laughs> mian. Joke apa? Um. Oh, okay. Uh, apa ikan apa bila kita panggil nama dia dia akan berhenti. This is my best joke yang I ada Ooh, dalam wait. I punya arsenal. Okay, this is the best joke yang pernah wujud dalam sejarah kehidupan I. Ikan apa kalau kita panggil dia Dia berhenti Yes Kalau you tak gelap Berdosa, 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 berdosa <laughs> Dia semua dah dengar dah Pasalah ni ajok ni You dah sampai dia menangis Kat tepi macam tolonglah jangan bagi tahu <laughs> Sekali lagi really Dia terus saja Oh dah. my god Tengok wait, wait. Ikan apa Kita panggil nama dia Dia akan berhenti Ikan paus Okay, okay. Oh my god, that's a good one. Wow, you seorang je dalam dunia yang pernah, pernah boleh teka jawapan dia. Serius lah. Sangat impressive. Wow. Sis, <laughs> you see and brains. Get you. She intelligent. She clever. Wow. That's a yeah, good one. It's a good joke, right? Yeah. Okay, I akan I akan curi you punya apa tadi? Ku cinta padamu. Mhm. And you boleh curi this joke. I give it to you. Wait, wait, wait. I mm, this is not a joke. Tapi it's a macam teka-teki lah kan. Okay, boleh. What tea can be sweet can be sour? Party? No. Reality. Venti? Reality. Reality. It can be sweet and sour. Yes. It's not a joke. I like that. But I like, like that. It's a teka teki. Yeah, teka teki. Yeah. Okay, so basically we've actually come to the end of the show Yay. by some two je. Dia rasa macam sekejap je actually kita yeah, membora. Um, tapi thank you guys so much for watching. Macam biasa, we really hope that you enjoyed this episode. Thank you so much Rose sebab thank menghabiskan you for masa dengan me. kita. I love talking to you. I love That's talking so to, to you too. Like I, I find it hard for me to like 
talk to people because mm-hmm. like usually I can macam just listen. I'm a, I can dengar tapi I don't know how to like create the conversation. Uh-huh. But like talking to you is so fun. Thank you sis. I appreciate it. Tapi I rasa also actually kepada especially kepada orang yang suka like mendengar in a conversation kadang-kadang bila you dapat peluang untuk macam melepaskan apa yang oh, ada kat dalam. Oh so dia nice. akan rasa macam oh, It, it's actually really important to find the right people that Betul. you can have conversation with. Betul. Kalau tak, you nak simpan macam mana? Betul. Yeah. Right, so nice. Thank you for having me. No, here. you're most welcome. And honestly, babe, I'm so proud of you. Um, Not just pasal carry awak, tapi macam cara awak, like, pembawakan diri you and cara you menghadap um obstacles, I rasa it's something yang sangat-sangat-sangat inspiring. And I hope semua orang kat luar sana, kalau you dapat mm. satu je benda dari episod ni, bukan satu jokes kita yang memang sangat kelakar, <laughs> tapi also macam cara yang you menghadapi benda tu and you tak give up. Because like that type of like um drive is like so important untuk jadi Betul. seorang yang macam makin grow lah dalam kehidupan. Betul. So thank you so much for spending time with us. Thank you Amelia. It's so Welcome. nice. And thank you kepada semua penonton Studio Sembang. Um this is going to be our last episode for 2023. Oh so God. daripada Rose, me and the entire Studio Sembang team, we hope you guys have a very very happy new year and we will see you next Thursday next year <laughs> in Studio Sembang at 10 p.m. on YouTube. Spotify and Apple Podcasts. We'll see you guys there. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Happy New Year. Woo!